you're looking at my car, you obviously are interested. You've clicked on my YouTube video. What we have is an unrestored 42,000 mile original car, uh, the kind that you rarely see, actually my favorite type of car. Most of the paint, uh, with very little exception, is original to the car. The stainless is what I would call NOS quality. It's absolutely immaculate. It's free of dents and scratches with the exception of one piece in the rear. We'll take a close look at that. Uh, minor little ding, easily repaired. The interior is original and absolutely immaculate. Uh, the best that you will ever see. Uh, all in all, this car is as mint of an original specimen as you'd ever hope to find. All numbers matching. One owner, still titled the original owner's name. The experience behind the wheel is fantastic. Uh, it's the same experience you would have if you'd have bought the car in 1964 and drove it off the dealer's lot. Uh, just phenomenal. Super tight machine. The motor's never been into. It's never needed it. Um, like I said, uh, really, I think it's just right at 43,000 original miles. Um, just a fabulous machine. In many respects, it looks showroom new. Of course, the paint has some patina. Uh, that you would expect with 44-year-old, uh, 45-year-old paint. Um, and some flaws, of course, some minor uh, door dings, very minor, a few little minor chips. Uh, the door jams, however, are just beautiful. Um, this is how it left Mr. Chevrolet's factory many years ago. It's never needed a paint job. A few spot repairs here and there uh, uh, that the original owner had performed. He was very particular. If he got a scratch, he had it uh, repaired. Um, I noted three spots, uh, minor in the grand scheme of things. Um, in general, just over the top mint. Here's the one little thing I, re I uh, referenced a minute ago. Easily repaired. It's not crimped in any way, just a slight push in there. The rest of the panel is absolutely beautiful. Uh, chrome, everything on this car is survivor quality at the highest level. Very hard to find a car of this caliber. It's been in a garage, effectively in cold storage for 35 years. He quit driving it in 77, continued to put registration receipts up to 85 on the car, um, just out of a legal obligation, he thought, uh, but effectively not driven after 1978, stored for those some 35 years, roughly, uh, in his garage. Um, this car never lived a day outside of the garage. Of course, it was driven for the 43,000 miles. Um, but other than that, loved and maintained as a collector car from day one, you might say. Beautiful door jams, original weather strip. Uh, just too good to touch in any way. The dash looks showroom new, the interior headliner, um, just a fabulous machine all the way. The radio sounds like a brand new radio. The air is ice cold. You can drive this car with the palm of your hand. It's a power steering car and a power brake car. It is a 327, 270, 250 horse, excuse me, which is the same horsepower that came in the base Corvette for 64. Uh, one of the most famous motors of all time. Free revving, fast revving motor. This car has all the power you would want. And it has no bad habits. Door is shut super tight. It's beautiful under the hood. Original, not restored. Nothing's been monkey with. To make this car uh, road ready, all we had to do was uh, put two mufflers on it. It actually still has the original exhaust system. We did replace two mufflers, replace the gas tank. Uh, those items need to be replaced from having sat so long. That's typical of uh, cars that aren't driven. Other than that, I think you could drive cross country. It does have the correct tires. I believe they're probably reproduction. They're new or newer with uh, tons of tread in them. Polymar Red, probably the most beautiful color, one of the top colors of the 60s. Well, I mentioned that this car really had fantastic documentation. It's really rare uh, when you get a car that has this type of documentation. Not only is it a one owner, uh, low mileage car in mint, unrestored condition, it really has the complete history. All the history is told right here. 
with both dealer documents, original ownership documents, and best of all, an actual owner's log where the owner logged mileage from day one, everything that he ever did to the car. We'll get back to that in a minute because it really ties down the miles in this car perfectly. Uh, I thought one of the most special things is this article. It's a newspaper article. I'll just read it real quickly. Robert Kloss, that's the original owner. Robert Kloss recently purchased his 1964 Impala Super Sport Coupe from William Wil Wilford Gardner at Buck Turner Chevrolet Company, Baytown, Texas. It's an original Texas from the car from day one. Robert and his family are members of the uh, Lutheran Church and are residents of Baytown since 1940. Mr. Kloss is employed at U.S. Industrial Chemical Company. And here, you, if you can see this picture, there's a picture of Mr. Kloss, the original owner, standing by the uh, owner of the dealership and this very car the day it was bought. That's pretty special. You, uh, in fact, I've never seen that in all the cars I've owned and collected over the years. Um, additionally, we have the registration receipts from 1963, purchased in December. So obviously he's got a late 1963 registration receipt. And in this registration receipt, you see the Impala Super Sport Coupe. Uh, and it goes to the original owner from the manufacturer's certificate, new. So this is the dealer, uh, the first registration going from the dealer uh, to the original owner, Texas Highway Department. And again, this is the very first one, and that is the 1963, 64, 65, and then going on, it's just amazing, uh, 66, 67, and so forth until you get to the last registration receipt. This registration receipt was the last time Mr. Kloss registered the car. He actually quit driving it much earlier, quit driving it much earlier, but his last registration was August 31st, 1984, which gave him the 1985 registration tag that's on the license plate now. He continued to register the car out of a sense, I guess, of legal obligation or something for years beyond actually driving the car. Here's the original title. This car has never been in the name of anybody other than the original owner. And this is the title that was issued with this car, brand new, State of Texas, December 10th, 1963 is the exact date uh, that this car was titled over to Mr. Kloss. Uh, amazing. Original title, original Texas Highway Department envelope, the original title came in. Of course, the original owner's manual and the other uh, dealer type documents he got with the car, the custom features, 24 facts, the seatbelt document that you sometimes see with these cars. Here's the original registration receipt. Uh, and then you have the last inspection sticker. We peeled this off the windshield. And this is the very last inspection sticker of this car. It was inspected on 3-23-1979. Uh, he took it out uh, to run it around the block and got an updated inspection sticker at 43,131 miles. Now to help you understand the mileage on this car, if you look at the odometer right now, the odometer is reading exactly at 43,295, 43,295 miles. The last registration was 160 miles ago, 20 years ago, in 1979. So in 20 years, it's traveled 160 miles, driven around the block, occasionally just to keep it running. That's absolutely amazing. Now, when you look in the little booklet, the last entry Mr. Kloss made in the book is dated October 5th, 1978. That entry shows 43,115 miles, and it said he replaced both rear tires. Just an amazing book to have, very special. Uh, just dials down tight exactly the miles over time. Well, there it is. Uh, I don't know what else you could ask for as it relates to documentation and proof of documented miles. We have a one owner car with 43,000 and some change miles on it. The history is documented in a diary. You've got registration receipts over time and everything showing that this, in fact, has been owned by one Texas owner from day one. Very special.